All right, guys, welcome back. We're live for episode number 59 of the Before the Trainwreck series. This is a follow-up to last week's episode, which I covered uh, early signs of red flags when dating. So this will be red flags uh, discovered later on. Um, about the one-year mark is what I was looking for. So I solicited some feedback from you guys uh, on social media and a few other platforms. So like I did last week, I'll share the, uh, the screens and get right into it. Uh, I've got a few of my own notes here as well to cover. Now, if you guys are listening on podcast platforms, please uh, rate the podcast. It helps me out a ton. Also, if you're watching elsewhere on YouTube, um, come over and watch us on, or sorry, elsewhere on YouTube, on Facebook or Twitter, Periscope, whatever. Come over and watch on YouTube. It's just uh, easier for me to communicate with everybody. Um Got a whole bunch of feedback from you guys on this one too. So um, let's hop right into it. I'll share the screen and uh, let's do this. Okay, so um, over on the community tab, a lot of you guys fed back. Let's uh, scroll down. By the way, um, if you're already a member, there's some member only, only posts over here. If you're already a member, I've posted the join link to this particular broadcast. So if you have an experience to share as it's related to today's topic, red flags in a long-term relationship. Ideally, you know, around the one year mark where you really get to know the person. Um, click that link if you wanna share it and um, I'll pop you in the stream towards the end, but that's only for uh, members of the tab. So where are we over here? Expand and let's hop right into it. And sort by top comments. Let's see what you guys came up with here. 760. All right. Uh, NLP John says, if she has slutty friends that claim she's nothing like them, she is lying. That's the top one. A lot of comments to that. Okay, let's let's talk about that for a minute. Um, a, lot, <laughs> a lot of guys uh, really ignore this one. I I did too a couple of times, you know, when I was younger as well, of course. Um, you're always going to be the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I remember I was dating this girl in my early 30s. And um, she was constantly going out with her girlfriends uh, for girls' night out. She'd like stay out till four or five in the morning, totally smash. And the next day, she'd like pass out by eight o'clock when I would see her. And uh, she would always claim that, well, she's not doing anything. Her friends are the promiscuous ones, and she's not. But the truth remains, guys. If you're in a long-term relationship and she keeps going out uh, with her girlfriends, a girls' night out every once in a while for a birthday or something like that is totally fine. You know. Norm, like most normal women um, who have some respect and value in the relationship will limit those to like a dinner or a lunch or something like that, and then they're done. But if she's uh, promiscuous um, or if you're considering it a red flag, it's, you know, you've been with her for a year, but she's constantly like every week, every other week, several times a month anyway, going out with her girlfriends. Um, she's going out to basically solicit the attention of other men. The process of getting dressed up, doing her hair, putting on the makeup, the bra, the underwear, the shoes, the stockings, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's never a good sign. That is definitely a big red flag in a long-term relationship. So just quickly expand this and see if there's any, uh, she goes out of way to prove she isn't like that. Yeah. Um, there's always the, those, those mental uh, gymnastics. Let me go here and full screen it. There's always these mental gymnastics that um, women will play that a lot of guys can't really uh, see through for some reason. I know that a lot of the guys that are more seasoned and have watched my channel for a bit longer, a little more wiser to this, but um, you've got to understand that uh, like <laughs> the mental gymnastics is really just that. It's all it's all a dog and pony show. It's all, it's all smoke and mirrors. Um, yeah, this guy over here, Chris Miller, says women of the same nature will flock together. So again, you know, if she's got five broke friends, she'll be the sixth. If she's got five obese friends with bad self-care habits, uh, they eat terribly. You know, she's definitely going to be the six at some point if she's not right now. She's got three or sorry, five promiscuous friends. Guaranteed she will be the six eventually. So that's the first one we came across here. Again, these are all the most popular ones as, as voted by you guys with a thumbs up. Uh, RT here says her parents, siblings are financially irresponsible. If you're in a long term relationship, uh, you can only ignore the issue for so long before it comes your problem. I've actually got this on my list of red flags. And if you guys haven't gotten that yet, I'll just pop it down here on the bottom. So uh, just as a quick reminder, it's just entrepreneursandcars.com forward slash red dash flags. And you can download the full uh, chapter. I've got 20 on there. 
Uh, if I'm being honest, I think before I uh, publish the book, I'm going to add at least a couple more uh, to that chapter and probably organize a few uh, into a yellow category, meaning you want to be aware of them or, or monitor them to see what happens. Um, but definitely check that out. That's just on the bottom of the screen. Um, so money, uh, where did that fall into? Broke. Number six on my red flag list. Um, if she's not able to manage her money and she's got nothing to show for her life, but, uh, okay, listen, she's 20, 21 years old. You shouldn't expect much. If she's into her thirties, she's had the epiphany fades, you know, she's 30, 35, 40, something like that. Um, if she's got nothing to show for what she's been doing in her life, but a closet full of handbags and shoes and a bunch of credit card debt and some student loans, that is a massive red flag. If you discover that into a long-term relationship, um, she better have a plan or an elimination strategy to get rid of that debt. Um, if she doesn't, or she's making no headway, her problems will eventually become your problem. I can guarantee it. Um, T L O L looks like a picture of Tyler Durden there. Uh, we'll just highlight it. So it's easy for you guys to see. She said she wanted to go to the movies with her friends, but felt limited by our relationship. I was like, Hmm, that's weird. So I asked if I could see her messages and her friends was actually just one guy she was getting along with more and more at the time, walked right out then and there. <clears throat> I'm not really sure what the strategy was with movies and friends, but felt limited. I, I suspect she probably felt some, um, let's see what, she, what these comments here said, found a lot earlier than most guys do. Okay, so he carries on. Yeah, I was 18 at the time. I'd researched some dating tips after being screwed over by a few girls in my teens. You guys shouldn't be in LTRs in your teens or even in your 20s. Definitely not in your teens for sure. Uh, I'd say I was purple pill, but just knew to walk in the situation. Okay, so this is all a younger guy. I wheel my trash out to the curb. Uh, to be honest, at this stage, I don't even get into relationships. Female, okay, sure you did. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm just going to add some commentary to this. Um, Let's, let's kind of frame it along the lines of um, male friends because this one here falls into red flag number five on my list here below. If she's got a bunch of male friends in her life, sometimes they're not honest about it. Sometimes uh, they're going to be dishonest or uh, they may even uh, opt out some factual information or replace it with some other ideas or just kind of skip over it altogether. Um, a lot of women have gay friends. Not a big deal. She wants to hang out with, you know, her, her gay buddy or chat on the phone with them, whatever. Who cares? You know, the dude's gay, whatever. But if she's uh, into a friendship with uh, other men as she's in a long-term relationship with you, let's be honest, men and women don't particularly have a lot of things in common when it comes to doing stuff. Um, men like to do, I mean, okay, most masculine men pursue conventionally masculine pursuits, fast stuff, cars, boats, motorcycles, planes, sea dues, you know, stuff like that. Or they like to get out in, you know, the outdoors, fishing, hunting, you know, uh, cottaging, lake, lake life, whatever, you know, this is what men like to do. They like to hang out with other men and shoot the shit. And they kind of like shit test each other and they have fun with each, with one another. And they like to provoke one another. But if men and women are hanging out with each other while you're in a long-term relationship, it's always suspicious because he doesn't authentically have any other interest in her than what she offers with her beauty and her sexuality. Um, a lot of guys try to get into girls' pants just by being their friend. Not necessarily a uh, big th uh, threat per se, but if you're in a exclusive monogamous relationship over a long-term basis over the course of a year, and you discover she's got male friends or a male friend that she confides in that isn't gay, that's a red flag. Dudes are only interested in one thing for the most part, and that's getting in her pants. Um, try, trying to write it off as, oh, well, we're just platonic or we're just friends. I guarantee they've either banged in the past, which would um, lead to a future possible bang, or he's, tr or he's still trying to get in her pants. Um, let's go down to the next one over here. Uh, Miles Chumley, girls night out, just hang with her friends. Kind of covered up that a little bit earlier. Um, again, a girl's night out uh, is not particularly significant if it's just dinner and she's home after that. But if she's out partying with her girlfriends and on a consistent basis, she's up to no good. She's marketing herself to other women or sorry, to other men, 
maybe to women too. I don't know. Maybe she's bi. Who knows? But if she's constantly doing that, she's not in your frame. She's looking for something better. She's basically she's basically on the soccer pitch, um, still playing the game. Um, I always tell guys if she hasn't abandoned her sexual strategy, which is open hypergamy, basically she's constantly asking herself if this is the best I can do. Women that aren't satisfied with the guy that she's with in an LTR will go out to market themselves to other people. Don't buy any of the nonsense like, well, you know, we're in a relationship, but none of my friends are, so I'm just going to go out with them to support them or be the wing girl or blah, 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 whatever the insert notion is. Um, <laughs> again, those are the mental gymnastics that she's jumping through hoops in her head with. But the reality is, is women with boyfriends don't go out with their girlfriends to nightclubs and bars. It's just plain and simple, straightforward. Um, if she's the type that wants to go away for a weekend or she wants to constantly do that, um, it's incumbent upon you to walk away from that relationship. Uh, hopefully you guys aren't living together. If you are, you can basically get rid of your shit, throw on the front porch and change the locks and say, all right, you know, if you want to do that, it's fine. Your stuff's on the front porch. You can go get it. Um, it's not something that men should tolerate ever. Weak men will tolerate it. When men with limited options that haven't got many other uh, ways to go, will let her go out and sometimes even encourage it. I've seen, I've even seen guys. Um, I remember there was this one chick that uh, was good friends with uh, this woman that I was dating at one point. And she was a single mom um, with a kid in tow from her prior marriage. And her current boyfriend would babysit her kid while she would go out and go salsa dancing and do all that kind of you know provocative stuff. Um, never a good scene, always ends in some kind of a train wreck. So you definitely have to be aware of the, you know, girls night out just to hang with friends. Okay. Uh, another one up here to the top. This one got a lot of, uh, upvotes on it. Let's see what this Alex guy said. She had no discipline or motivation and all her plans, goals never came to fruition. Uh, never looked for a better job, never went to the gym, never explored any new hobbies other than Netflix all the while touting the entitled I'm a queen mentality, acting as if she had some benevolent uh, being allowing me the privilege of being in her presence. Uh, presence. Um, listen, if, if you're at the stage in a long-term relationship where she's approaching you and the relationship like she's a queen and you need to bend the knee to her constantly uh, and acting as if she's doing you a favor being in your presence, it's done, okay? The clock is ticking down to the end of this. Uh, it may not happen that week or that month as you discover this, but the clock is ticking down to the end of the relationship. And in many cases, guys that haven't got good frame or are red pill aware end up with a really, really bad case of one-itis. Uh, definitely co-sign this. This is also another big red flag. Sorry, I should start harding these to let these guys know that uh, I've read these just to make sure I don't go over them twice. Um, Gabriel, when she told me we would get a joint bank account, hang on a sec, why would you get a joint bank account with a girl, dude? Okay, when she told me we should get a joint bank account, her, $9 an hour, me, $32 an hour. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Okay, this guy's making like more than three times what she is. And that's not that that uncommon. Um you know, because of uh, hypergamy, women always date across and up in the socioeconomic scale. So uh, it's not likely that a woman making $9 an hour is going to settle for a guy making $9 an hour. Highly, highly unlikely. Um, so she found this guy that's making considerably more and she wants to pile the money into a joint bank account. Big red flag. Do not get involved. L listen, anytime something like this happens, you're, you're basically inviting a train wreck to happen in your life by commingling your finances. You should never commingle your finances with a woman. Um, you know, we live in this modern age today of, uh, you know, women are all equal and, you know, I don't need no man and I can make as much as man can and blah, blah, blah. Cool. Um, go do that. You know, um, unless she's your wife, totally in your frame, you vetted all problems. She's not bringing debt to the table, doesn't have daddy issues, doesn't seek validation, isn't a pathological liar, doesn't throw hissy fits. I'm going to talk towards the end about um, the ones that I wanted to cover on a long-term basis. Then maybe you might want to, because she's raising your kids in a stay-at-home wife and, you know, like a homemaker sort of thing, then you might want to 
um, pile the money into a, a account so she can get things like groceries or, or whatever. But at the one year mark, if you guys are dating and she's like, well, you know, uh, Gabriel, because you're making, you know, uh, $32 an hour and I'm doing $9 at my part-time job at the nail salon, I think we should pile our money into a joint bank account so we can deal with the rent and the other. It's like, there's always some mental gymnastics that come out of that. And you have to also understand um, that that always, always, always leads to a train wreck. Let me just expand that and see what other uh, comments people threw in here. Yeah, that's a funny one, right? Uh, I don't know. Let's see here, dude. God almighty. What the hell? Why are these guys talking about soccer? Is that a soccer icon? I don't know. Maybe he's a soccer player. Who knows? Not obviously not big on sports. Uh, brother Palpatine here says, uh, she gained like 60 pounds and went insane on Lexapro. I'm assuming Lexapro's SSRI or an antidepressant. So let's have a quick look here. Lexapro oral. Let's see what the hell this is. Depression and anxiety, <sighs> huge red flag, huge long-term basis. Do not get involved with women that are on antidepressants. Um, there are a lot of really, really bad things. Martin, I'll get your super chat in just one second right after this. Thanks for that, brother. Um, when women go on to antidepressants, there's a lot of really, really bad things that happen. One, first of all, a lot of them gain weight and not just like, you know, five pounds or 10 pounds or anything like that. It's often quite excessive. Um, he says here that she went insane on Lexapro. Um, so the other problem in addition to the weight gain is they, is they kind of get numbed to life. Um, a lot of these SSRIs, antidepressants, uh, psychiatric drugs often, um, dull a person's senses. So this happens to men and women. Um, it seems like there's higher instances though, of women that use antidepressants than men today. Um, if you, if you want to check early on when you're dating, if you're at her place, open the medicine cabinet when you're in the bathroom and just see what's in there. Um, you know, get an idea of what's going on <laughs> medically. But um, I've opened up medicine cabinets and I've seen like bottles of weird shit with all kinds of stickers and tags on it and half the stuff you can't pronounce it. That's always a big red flag. But if she's going on to an antidepressant in a relationship, I mean, guys, at the end of the day, if she's in your frame and is happy with you and she feels like you're the best that she can do and are hypergamy satisfied, there's no way that she'll be on an antidepressant. Women only go on antidepressants when there's something wrong in their head or something wrong in their life. Uh, it's a really bad choice. And last but not least, the other downside to antidepressants is it has an adverse effect on her sex drive. Um, there was a TED talk that I saw at uh, one point in the last uh, seven or eight years, and I think... Um, I can't remember who the who the actual speaker was, but uh, they said something to the effect that the suppression on sex drive in women um, is so huge, uh, sex almost completely evaporates, or if it does continue, um, she doesn't even actually get aroused anymore. So it's like the Sahara Desert down there. Um, I would definitely, definitely uh, co-sign what he said there. That is a big red flag, flag if it shows up in a long-term relationship. Brother Palpatine makes a great point there. Uh, let me heart that and make sure I get these out of the way here. Uh, African Jean Dominance says, she said she didn't have any secrets and I believed her. 178 thumbs up on that one. That one's big. Let's see what the comments say. Dude, even Victoria has secrets. <laughs> uh, let's see what else here. Funny, but not exactly a red flag. Uh, let's see what else people commented on here. Okay. So all women have secrets. Um, many, many secrets in fact. So you're not going to get a woman that has no secrets or doesn't choose to opt out certain information when you're in an LTR. They're not going to tell you everything. Um, most women, if you know, you meet her post epiphany phase, um, and she had a good run in her twenties on the carousel, for example, uh, she's not going to admit, you know, if she's away at college for four years, uh, if she had the basketball team run a train on her, it's not something that she's going to talk about. Um, there's often a lot of secrets out there. You're never going to find them all. Um, you certainly want to test between uh, words that she says and behavior that she chooses, especially choices that she makes in her life. If there's conflict or constant conflict between statements and choices slash behavior, um, there's secrets there. There's there there's some underlying notion that there's a problem there. It's not necessarily a big red flag in 
uh, a long-term relationship until you discover what those secrets are. You know, if the secret is insignificant, and I mean, if she's keeping it as a secret, it's usually not insignificant, let's be honest. Um, but if the secret is significant, uh, biblical, you know, like a monolith, then it's it's a see you later, it's the next, you know, done. Um, most guys don't have the wherewithal to walk away from bad relationships or bad women. They'll often just kind of stick around because it's all they got or the best that they can do. Let me hit Martin's super chat here. What did he say? Uh, long-term relationships, siphoning cash to broke parents behind my back. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, I know a few guys that um, got involved with women that culturally uh, felt an obligation to send money either, you know, like back home. I know a guy that would send his uh, girlfriend would send money uh, back to the Philippines or, or Vietnam or something like that. Um, and generally speaking, if they're poor over there and she comes to a better world and makes a life for herself or finds a rich guy, for example, and they get married, um, that's a big problem. That's that's a frame that you got to set early on in the relationship. You can't allow um, your wealth to erode because she wants to go and throw it at her family's problems. Um, some guys will be okay with it. You know, some guys will just be like, okay, it's, it's, it's part of the cost of being in a relationship with this chick. Uh, high value, strong males will not allow it. They won't allow it. Um, you know, some of the other guys will tolerate it to a certain degree. You have to decide how bad that looks or could look for you and how much money is going back that way. Um, and whether or not her problems becoming your problem. Uh, if she's got her life together and her money, um, all sorted out. Sorry, Martin Mooney, there is. Um, you know, she's got her money all all sorted out and it doesn't affect you any shape, way, or form. Um, not a big red red flag in an LTR. But when when her problems start becoming your problems, um, let's say financially, in this case, yeah, big red flag. It's see you later, deep six that relationship. Bye-bye. Um, let me see here. Cop cuffs it says projection. She accused me of texting other girls while she was texting her ex from high school. I'm assuming that's high school. Uh, I called BS and asked to see her phone. She said, no, that was the end of our STR. I'm guessing that short-term relationship. Um, so let's talk about her communicating with exes. I've got that as uh, red flag number five. So down over there on that chapter. Uh, I'll here, Let me see if I can go into any kind of length here. Which one is that? Number five. Poor with money. Nope. Keeps men from her past around. Uh, I'll just read this. It'll be a lot easier for it to pop up. Oh, hang on. Uh, boom here. Okay. Women like to have options. A recent survey showed. Okay. So almost half of married women or women in relationships admitted to having a backup plan. So a guy. Uh, those, those are the ones that admitted to it. If you're getting into a long-term relationship, she wants you to abandon your sexual strategy of unlimited access to unlimited women. She needs to burn the ship on the shores of her new life with you and cut all emotional ties with other men. Now, some women will end up as an alpha widow, which is loosely defined as when women pine for high value alphas that couldn't commit or wouldn't commit to her in her early years. So if this guy that this gentleman is describing was alpha widowed by this guy in high school, big red flag, see you later. Um, you do not want to invite a woman into your life into a long-term relationship or if you're into a long-term relationship and you discover that she's alpha widowed and communicating with some guy from high school, she's not seeing you as your best choice. She's not seeing you as her best option. Her hypergamy is not going to be satisfied. You're inviting a train wreck in your life. You need to set firm boundary and if she follows suit, good. If she won't or can't, then it's see you later. You have a decision that you need to make. You know, you can't... Um, you know, you can't let these things happen in your life and uh, expect good to come out of her having friendships from past boyfriends or if she's alpha widowed or having lunches with her guys, blah, 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 sort of thing. Let me just continue on, on this um, notion of exes and, you know, keeping guys in her life. Uh, she may not be in contact with them anymore. So we're talking about alpha widows. Uh, however, she still sees him as the one that got away and keeps a place from him for him in her head and her heart. She doesn't see you as her best option. Kind of talked about that. Genuine burning desire for you matters a lot. You don't want to be seen as just good enough. You want to ensure that you're getting her very best. Trust me when I say that no good ever comes from her having lunch with ex-boyfriends or other male friends. And you certainly don't want to be the guy that she settled for. You're beta bucks. If she's settling for you, 
she is not enthusiastic about you. Uh, if she is being intimate with you, then she's only having transactional intimacy with you, not validational. Validational is the kind that she has for the alpha Chad. She will break rules for him, but uh, she will make them for you if she settled for you. If you're a man chasing excellence in his life, then you don't need distractions like your woman seeking attention for or pining for other dudes. Men and women don't have much in the way of common interests other than men wanting to have sex with women and women wanting to extract attention and resources from men. Again, there should be no room for male friends in her life if you're in an LTR. Women like this should be limited to plate status until they can prove that they're over their past. Uh, Jerry, thank you for your generous super chat. Thanks, brother. Appreciate that. Um, got another one here from California. Oops. Uh, California 619 said, uh, what would be the best age range of a woman to marry? That's a longer question. I'm I'm not fond of marriage. I've said it many times on my channel. I'm vehemently opposed to marriage or living in a way that would be deemed as marriage uh, by family law. You expose yourself to far, far too much risk. That being said, I understand there's some men that want to have children and family, and you have to walk into the slaughterhouse with your eyes wide open before you do anything, before you even like, you know, what is the best age range of a woman to marry question? You should be fully read pill aware. You should have read the entire Rational Male book series, uh, Sean Smith's Tactical Guide to Women. Um, you should have watched the pretty much the entire playlist, the red pill playlist that I have on my channel, the Before the Train Wreck series. You need to be fully red pill aware. Now, as far as the best age range of a woman, if you want to invite her into your life on a long-term basis, if you want to have kids, that's really the only reason why you should marry is if you want to have kids or even live with a woman, forget about marriage, even live with a woman to have kids. Uh, she should be of prime childbearing age. Um, there's this notion today where women are sold this bill of goods by toxic feminism that you can have kids at 42 years old. Um, I'd often see on dating apps when I was using them, uh, women in their late 30s, sometimes even early 40s, sometimes even late 40s that said that they were looking to have kids. Bad idea. Listen, if you're going to have kids, woman in her prime Ch prime childbearing years is going to be under the age of 30, ideally under the age of 26. Realistically, women's ability to have um, healthy children starts to decline after the age of 23. Women aren't going to like me saying that, but the truth is cold and hard, and it does not care about your feelings or the lies. Uh, got a bunch of super chats that are rolling in here. Let's deal with real quick before I go back to this. Jake McLevy. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, her mother openly belittles and swears at her dad. Great point. Great point. I haven't seen that here in the um, comments. So let's so let's hit on that for a minute. Um, really, really bad sign because women typically adopt the behavior of their parents. Um, I remember I was dating this girl late twenties or early thirties. I think it was late late twenties. Really, really cute chick. Uh, you know, seemed to have a nice family. Um, it was about a year into dating and I had been to the family cottage a number of times, met a lot of the cousins, the uncles, everybody's very cool. And I remember one time her mom started, um, like browbeating her father and I didn't think too much of it at that time. It wasn't that big of a deal. And then I was over at Christmas, I think it was, and they had just moved into this new house and there was a big ass rock in the backyard. <laughs> this is on Christmas and her mom's great idea was telling him to go outside and move this big ass rock for her. Um, again, this is an older gentleman. Uh, he's retired. Um, you know, he's done his time. He's, you know, he'd been successful in his life, but he was all too happy to comply. So when you start seeing, um, behavior between her parents, you have to assume that she's probably going to adopt the same sort of strategies with you because it's what she knows. It's what she grew up on. Yeah, um, you definitely, definitely want to stay away from women that see their mother browbeating their father. If she treats the father like crap, it's a precursor to what you can expect to see in your own long-term relationship with her if you invite this woman in on a long-term basis. Uh, good point, Jake. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Sam whiskey. Hey, rich, can women divert men from reaching their first million? Absolutely, dude. You invite the wrong woman in your life. I've seen women make a total train wreck out of dudes that were on a path, of huge success. 
Um, I knew this one guy that had a great business, like brilliant entrepreneur, um, was making leaps and bounds as far as uh, progress with it. Had a, I mean, he was basically going through hyper growth with his business. And hyper growth really is defined as year over year growth over a thousand percent. And uh, she didn't want him spending that much time on the business and growing it. He also had a lot of fame or he was getting more fame, more recognition. He was getting awards, lots of money. She started to notice other women giving him a lot more attention and he gave all of it up and basically just gave up the business and went and got like a nine to five job. Um, yeah, so they can divert men from reaching their first million. You should definitely do not, never, ever, 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 ever abandon your dreams, hopes, and desires to fulfill hers. A woman should be a complement to your life, not the focus of your life. A man that diverts from his purpose um, and and supplicates her is is always at some point going to run into some problems in that relationship. Uh, Stephen Calvert, what's up, brother? I got a PhD in masculinity from you for free. Stick around, man. There's a lot more to come for you. Um, I've got your request uh, sorted almost. So that'll be, Steve made a, made a, a sponsor topic for video that I got to put out soon. Um, so I'll take care of that for you very soon, brother. Thanks. Um, let's go back to the screen over here and dive into a few more of these. Guys, do me a huge favor. If you're watching this right now, um, head over to YouTube and uh, watch it there. It makes a huge, huge difference. Uh, I'm just going to drop this in the chat. So if you're watching this on like Periscope or Facebook, here. and uh, the algorithms love a good thumbs up. So do me a, a huge favor. Just give it a, a quick th thumbs ups as well, too. Um, Jacques Francois, Francais. Okay. Uh, Jacques says she developed a lot of feminist ideology, the whole spectrum. When I split from her, she ironically changed many of her viewpoints. Um, a lot of guys will get involved in long-term relationships with women that don't give off feminist ideologies. Um, I'll give you a good example. Um, the traditional toxic feminist is often easily identified because, you know, she's got short, purple, green, blue hair. It's non it's not a normal hair color it's you know outrageous uh you'll see things like um i don't need no man you'll start to hear them complain about the patriarchy um conventionally masculine uh men that don't tolerate crap i.e donald trump you know she'll start saying disparaging things about him um you'll start to hear her talk about um other areas of the socioeconomic chain where um she's trying to virtue signal for um, and a lot of that can develop over time, you know, packing on weight, you know, not, not, not doing anything like feminism defined basically tells women not to do anything for the express pleasure of men. So cooking, cleaning, um, you know, being conventionally feminine, putting on makeup, you know, uh, keeping, keeping her figure attractive, going to the gym, you know, outwardly projecting beauty. Um, if you start to see that deteriorate over time laziness. Um, you've got to either nip it in the bud or make a decision to get rid of her because that's only going to get worse. Uh, I've shared this story before where I had a uh, coaching consult with a gentleman that was married for just over 10 years. And um, he was having a real hard time with a divorce. Uh, two kids, loved his kids to bits. She was starting to uh, drop a lot of hints that he was going to have uh, very limited to almost no access to his kids. And he started to realize all of the money was going to flow to her and he was going to lose a considerable amount of his assets, including the family home. So, I mean, the first thing I asked him was like, well, what's her voting patterns look like? Like, is she a feminist? You know, what, you know, what does her belief system look like? And interestingly, at the start of the relationship, conventionally feminine, came from an intact family, uh, you know, father was basically a patriarch, um, you know, the other siblings would always defer to him, look up to him, same thing with the uh, mother. Uh, but over time, you know, the kids got a little older, she got into the workforce, took on an HR job somewhere in a government uh, department, and that's when things started to go downhill for him. Now, when the divorce started to unfold and he had to try to untie the knot, 
He's now divorcing somebody that is no longer conventionally conservative with conservative voting patterns, with strong religious beliefs. He actually met her in, in uh, church. Now she's no longer going to church, no longer subscribes to that particular uh, faith or religion. Uh, voting patterns change a liberal, uh, moved into an office environment that's, that's um, you know, he, he basically described it as openly hostile towards men. And a lot of the sound bites that he heard over the years started to change from value and masculinity to despising it. Um, sound bites around, you know, oppression and the patriarchy. And, you know, well, I only make so many cents on a dollar and men make a dollar and I make 72 cents or whatever that notion is. You can, you can bet that during the divorce, she's going to rely on everything in family law because there's nothing in it that's um, written in the best interest of the kids at the end of the day. It's everything within family law today in most Western places anyway. Uh, it doesn't encourage women to behave well. It doesn't encourage women to behave in the best interest of the children. It encourages her to optimize her hypergamy on the exit. Not, only, not a lot of people talk about this. She wants Women want the best deal that they can get. And if family law can facilitate that at his expense, she'll do it. So being openly uh, feminine today is not a guarantee 10, 15 years down the road that she's still going to remain uh, and still subscribe to that same faith. Um, this woman changed, you know, she did a complete 180 and I don't know of a way to prevent or predict that. I mean, it's only going to reveal itself over time. If you see it start to reveal itself in a long-term relationship. So let's actionable advice today. If you see that start to reveal itself in a long-term relationship, you're dating for a year or two and you start to see her behavior change. She's no longer pro-femininity. Now she's anti-femininity. You start to see things like her hair gets cut shorter. She starts to uh, complain about uh, conventionally masculine men that don't tolerate crap, i.e. Donald Trump, um, stuff like that. Then you can you can bet that you're going to be inviting the train wreck in your life at some point. Um, women that adopt, I mean, I'll leave it on this point and move on, but women that adopt a conventional toxic feminist mindset can't be happy because it requires them to be a victim. A victim mindset, and I've said this so many times on my channel, especially over the last couple of weeks, um, with a lot of people out there that are riding and behaving like little brats right now, uh, a victim mindset is a loser's mindset, and you can't be happy with yourself in a relationship with the person you're with if you always feel like there's an oppressor out there. Um, if she believes that she's oppressed or she starts to signal that, that's a problem. That's a big red flag. That is a get the hell out of there. Um, let me grab a couple of these other super chats that are rolling in. Thanks, Isaac. By the way, guys, if you join the um, channel, it's it, it really helps out a lot. So just hit that and I can you know try to pay attention a lot more to the uh, conversations in there. And you also get access to the chat while broadcasting live. Isaac, where are you? Uh, thanks for furthering my red pill on women in life. Thanks, brother. Appreciate the uh, super chat. And sounds pure, sounds pure 91. Uh, I knew it was time to end when she wanted me to burn and cut her with knives and cigarettes during sex. This didn't happen till later. She was crazy. Um, you want to be careful with that. Like some women will have fetishes, you know, BDSM sort of stuff like that. Um, not my thing. I'm not going to mummify a chick or, you know, like any of those things. I've, I've seen guys do it. I actually... Um, got into a learning workshop once where this guy was demonstrating how to mummify a woman. Um, not, does nothing for me, but some women get off on that. You want to be really, really careful with anything that might lead to burns, cuts. Um, that could that could potentially come back to bite you in the ass. I don't I don't think it's worth it. Um, there's probably some other underlying red flags there. Okay, so Jacques did that one. We covered that. Uh, she unsubscribed the Entrepreneurs and Cars channel from my YouTube account. <laughs> I've heard this before. Um, I've heard guys say that um, their girlfriends check their watch history on YouTube and they'll discover my channel and then they'll lecture them about what a bad boyfriend they are or what a bad person I am because I'm revealing you know certain truths. Again, the bomber only gets flacked when it's uh, over target. Um, women should not be um, moderating or censoring your activity. Um, if you like boobs and want to follow a boobs page on Instagram, 
then do as you please, right? You know, you can you can do that. Nobody's allowed to tell you what you can and can't look at. If you want to watch certain YouTube channels that you find enlightening or entertaining, and she wants to prohibit you from doing that, that's a big red flag. That's a controlling woman. Uh, you might only see that at the six month or the 12 month mark, but if you invite her into your life on a more permanent basis, especially if you do something dumb like get married or live in a way that the state can, you know, sees as marriage, you're going to have a lot worse to deal with than her just unsubscribing you from a YouTube channel. Um, okay, let's go down here. Drone World. She has a hundred guy friends pending uh, friendship requests on Facebook like a trophy on a wall, the pillars for the most insecure woman I've ever met. That's a good point. Um, I have number 13 on my red flag chapter. So let's discuss that since it's relevant to that point. Let me pull it up here. Oops. Uh, Word. And validation online is number 13. Lucky number 13. I'll just read this out because I was going to cover this anyway. Uh, social media is a staple in today's world. Almost all women are on it. However, women who have who use a public social media to gain attention from men should be avoided. While there are no good girls on social media, the better ones will use private accounts. So what I mean by that is if she's on Instagram and her account is private and she only posts pictures for her family and friends, not to solicit the attention or the likes or adoration of beta male orbiters, that's okay. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. If she's using Facebook, for example, on Facebook, you can select um, global, meaning everybody can see the post. You can select uh, friends of friends, meaning uh, you, your friends, and the friends of your friends can see the post. Uh, you can select friends only, or you can even limit it further beyond that to just you know f uh, close family members and, and stuff like that. So if, if she's making posts for uh, friends only on Facebook, for example, uh, and it's just like updates, like something that happened at work or some uh, achievement, for example, not a big deal. You know, she graduated, uh, cum laude, blah, 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 whatever. Um, that's fine. Not a big deal. But if she's out there making public posts on a consistent basis, seeking validation and attention. So women use social media as a yardstick um, for, I mean, how can I put it? There's a, there's an element of, it's almost like they want more friends on Facebook. You know, like this guy specifically saying, you know, 100 pen pending mail requests. Um, 100 pending would indicate she hasn't accepted them. But if her entire Facebook friends list is a bunch of dudes, um, mostly dudes, and she's posting stuff to solicit their attention, likes, and comments, that's a problem. Definitely a problem. Anyway, let me carry on reading this red flag number 13. Uh, meaning that only friends and family can see your posts. They aren't posting a provocative picture, fishing for likes, comments, direct messages from men providing loads of attention. Okay. Public accounts using social media to sell product or service and treating it like a business are okay, but understand she will still have men flirting with her. Let's say she is a, let's say she's Hope Beal. Okay. She's a hot fit fitness model. Uh, promoting uh, fitness drinks, uh, she does fitness activities, you know, butt workouts and stuff like that. If you're if you're dating a chick like that, or you're married to a chick like that, you're going to have to expect that there's going to be some beta male orbiters that are thirsty and dropping, uh, you know, stuff in her DMs and stuff like that. Par for the course, but it better be her business. You know, she better be making millions from it. If it's just you know making the attention of men, no. Hard no, next, done. Uh, that is not your girlfriend. Y you know, women with boyfriends don't do that, straight up. Uh, the women posting daily provocative pictures of themselves on public accounts with thousands of thirsty beta males following them are selling something. It's their sexual agency. Women like this are looking to openly optimize their hypergamy. They don't even know that they're doing it. They don't even know what it is that they're doing. They just know that they like it. But that is what they're doing. So if they're doing that, they're on the ice trying to score a goal. That means you need to be on the ice scoring goals. Okay, that means that you do not abandon your sexual strategy. If you get into a relationship with a chick and she's doing this, she goes to plate status. Okay, you're doing the exact same thing. You're she, she's in the rotation. You're going out doing whatever you want, whenever you want. You're not in a committed relationship to a woman that does this. If you are, you're going about it the wrong way. You need to smarten up. 
Uh, if she's with you, but she's still posting pictures for attention, then she's asking, asking herself if you are the best that she can get. Most women can become drunk on social media attention. So if you decide to consider an LTR with a woman that's constantly seeking attention online, you need to continue to exercise your sexual strategy and date on a non-exclusive basis until such time as she abandons her open hypergamy. A woman's sexual strategy is open hypergamy, and when she's seeking attention online, she's actively on the ice trying to score a goal. Your sexual strategy as a man is unlimited access to unlimited women. Therefore, do not even consider monogamy until she abandons her advertising campaign. Do not take these women seriously. They're limited to plate or FWB status. Again, guys, uh, that's that red flag. You can get it on that list over there. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast after the fact, entrepreneursincars.com forward slash red dash flags you can download it there for free all right let's go back to some more of these over here gets defensive when logic is used here's the thing that most guys don't understand with women you can't apply logic to the relationship women like in girl world it's all about emotion a lot of guys think that they can red pill chicks or they can talk logic to women I remember there was a joke i can't remember who it was chris tucker chris rock it was one of the chris's they said something like women never ever let logic get in the way of an argument okay um it doesn't even matter how well you construct it how logical it is it's unlikely that she's going to see it from a logical perspective they always approach these things from a emotional perspective um so not necessarily a red flag in an ltr just to clarify that site cyber amp um I've not met one woman that applies logic more than emotion. Some women are okay with it. You know, they can see some of the logic, but the default's always going to be applying emotion to the equation when they're trying to figure it out. Um, John Guerrero says she only does missionary and just lies there. Look, if you're in a long-term relationship with a chick over a year and that's all you're getting, that's on you. You should have, like... She doesn't have enthusiastic, genuine burning desire for you if that's all you're getting. You're getting starfish transactional intimacy from her um and this is a precursor to a sexless marriage if this is where you're at at, at the one year mark it should be sayonara only guys that don't have a lot of options to exercise will tolerate basic you know missionary only type of intimacy uh sam whiskey a lot of women are going to default on a car loan this year um, if they're not working, yeah, it's entirely possible, dude. Entirely possible. There's a lot of people that are going to be struggling financially. Uh, oh, here's one. John Guerrero continues to say, she says, I'm not your girl. It's just your turn. <laughs> I've never heard a woman say that, but yeah, that would be a see you later. That's, that's just, you know, just move on. Um, online store says telling me that I must take out an insurance policy in my life before we have a child, as well as putting her as a beneficiary on my annuity okay i'm gonna have to try to tackle this one from a different angle um if you're getting divorced you'll be required to have a life insurance policy um because if you die or something happens to you you need to be able to provide for your kids a life insurance policy in general is smart if you have children um because you want them to be looked after most women not most some women maybe most i don't know uh, but a good chunk of women don't have the financial resources to take care of their own kids. That's why you see a lot of single moms on dating sites, even pregnant women on dating sites looking for a beta male provider. You don't want to be that guy. So his point uh, here, um, I don't I don't like the you must take out an insurance policy before you have a kid with her. Um, the child should be the beneficiary not her. Um, so that's something that you're going to have to consider if children are on the menu for you. Um, but I mean, I, I took out my life insurance policy going through the divorce because I didn't have one and it was a smart step to take. I took one out with a, um, I can't remember the type. There's um, term, I think it's called a term policy. Either way, it's got a cash surrender value. So if you take out a life insurance policy with a cash surrender value, uh, they're quite a bit more expensive. So without a cash surrender value, you might have a $500,000 policy that might cost you 35 bucks a month. There's no cash surrender value. Basically you die, your kids get the money 
or um, the executor of the state, you know, gets your money until your kids come of age sort of thing. Uh, if you have a life insurance policy for the same amount, let's say $500,000, but it has a cash surrender value, your payments are probably going to be closer to $700 to $800 a month. So it's a big, big difference. The difference though is at the end of the term, so let's say it's a 20 year term, uh, you're going to get a lump sum of money if you want to cash out on it. Um, my suggestion to guys is if you're going to get life insurance policies, get one with a cash surrender value, get it younger too, because the premiums will be less when you're younger. The healthier you are and the younger you are, the lower the premiums will be because your chances of dying, of, of course, going to be quite a bit lower. So when they underwrite the deal, of course, um, the cost to you is going to be less. The risk exposure to the life insurance company is going to be less as well. But I really like cash surrender value policies. Uh, because mine, for example, I think the total payments that I'm putting into it over 20 years, or it's probably going to be something like um, 260, $280,000 or something like that. Uh, but the payout is at least another uh, 30, 30, 33% more. It's about a third more than what I put into it. So it's almost like it's an investment vehicle. Um, the way that I did it with my broker provider, um, it's almost tax free. So you want to ask a uh, financial specialist about that where you live, because I'm sure it's going to differ from territory to territory. So not a bad thing. Smart to have if you have kids. I don't like the way that it was framed here, though, telling me that I must take out a life insurance policy before we have a child. Um, she's basically looking at you like your beta bucks then. Uh, you're going to be a beta male provider. Uh, you're not going to get her best. You're just not, it's it's not a scenario that has a great outcome in my view. So I would recommend being a little bit smarter about that and um, you know look for some other red flags that are probably coming up. Let's do a couple more on here and then I'm going to move over to the ones that I got off of uh, the Twitter feed. Uh, Roy Washington, thanks for the super chat. Ex-wife wants to reconcile year after I divorce her. <laughs> Listen, I've seen a few people reconcile with their ex-wives and get back together with them only to only to get divorced again a few years later. If you're getting divorced, hold firm, get out. Okay. If you're going through the divorce machine uh, and you haven't divorced, like it hasn't been finalized, she's doing the work on herself. Um, you don't have any more problems. There's a clear pattern, a clear path of no issues arising. Basically, you need to see clear examples of her doing work on whatever it is that's that's leading up to the divorce. Women initiate, you know, more divorces than men do. I think it's something like seventy or eighty percent of them. So um, if she's initiated, but then she wants to reconcile, what work has she done? You know, you got to ask yourself a lot of questions. What is this all about? Um, you got to be super, super careful with going back to lost flings and you know divorces and that sort of stuff. Uh, Chris P, thanks for the super chat. After three years, she intentionally ran my sports car with her SUV and destroyed it. I was inside the car when it happened. Oh, man. Listen, um, this goes to violent uh, women. So I was going to cover this anyway. Might as well go to it right now. Uh, again, also on my list, uh, violent women are... Not sure. Where am I? Liar. As he fits. Drama. Addiction. Where's violent? Number seven. Okay. Number seven, let's cover violent women. You should not, under any circumstances whatsoever, stay in a long-term relationship with any woman that behaves in a violent fashion. Slashing tires, keying your car, ramming your sports car, like Chris indicated over here. Um, this is a small one with a few paragraphs. Let me just hit it real quick. Women that have violent tendencies are a massive red flag. Early signs of violence such are small punch or shove. However, I've counseled many men that have dodged knife attacks or even had objects thrown at them from angry women having hissy fits. If you get married to a woman that's violent, I guarantee on a balance of probabilities, there's a strong, strong chance that you're going to get hit with a false domestic violence allegation or charge. That never ends well for women, for men. Do not, under any circumstance whatsoever, if there's any indication of violence, continue a long-term relationship. Uh, let me continue reading this. Men are physically stronger than women, so when there's a domestic violence call to the police, even if you're the innocent party making the call or defending yourself, it's likely that you'll be hauled away in cups rather than her. I did a video uh, within the last week on some DV tips for men. So if you're in a marriage getting divorced, and you want some tips, go watch that. I uploaded that in the last week. Um, you want to be the complainant 
if you're stuck in a scenario with a violent woman. Hopefully you guys are smart enough and don't allow this ever to happen to you. The problem for most guys is a lot of violent women are great in the sack, crazy in the head, crazy in the bed, right? And they'll overlook the violent tendencies because it usually ends up in great makeup sex. Um, but, 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 um, let me see here. Violence from any woman towards you for any reason should never, ever be tolerated. It's grounds for terminating the relationship immediately. Uh, to protect themselves, men must use their cell phone as a shield. I talked about that in the video. Go watch it. Um, if I haven't made my point clear enough yet, avoid all violent women at all costs. They aren't even worth a friends with benefits arrangement. The juice truly is the juice truly is not worth the squeeze when it comes to violent women. Not even FWB dudes. You you find out she's violent, get rid of her. Okay, she, don't let her problems, don't let whatever's going on in her head, whatever her past trauma is, become your problem. Trust me. Um, Hunter. Hunter Altenberg, thanks for Super Chat. He says, I feel like I'm breaking more plates than I'm spinning. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. It will happen. You'll get better. Keep, keep at it. Keep applying the red pill lens. More importantly, keep working on yourself. Chase excellence, not women. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see that there. Boom. Chase excellence, lift heavy shit. This uh, mug, by the way, guys, it's in the uh, Teespring store below if you want to grab some merch to support the channel. Always good reminders. Um, Slossage 17 uses my thumb to unlock my phone while I'm asleep. All right, let's talk about the women creeping your um, stuff, invading your privacy. <clears throat> like I have, where's my phone? Okay, so I've got my phone set to, to fingerprint, right? That's the only way that this phone can be unlocked without a um, keypad entry. Um, I've seen videos posted on social media of women using guys' fingers to unlock their phone and then reading their phone while they're passed out on a bus or a plane and somebody else films it from like a couple aisles away. It's hilarious as fuck if you ever see it. But for okay, so first things first, you should never sleep anywhere near your phone. Uh, under no circumstances whatsoever should it even be in your bedroom. My phone is downstairs on a charger, probably about 40 feet away from me. Uh, it's not good for you. Cell towers, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, that all disrupts your male endocrine system. There's been a lot of studies that show that it reduces testosterone, increases estrogen. All kinds of problems come out of it from the first perspective. You can completely avoid that ever happening if the phone is plugged into a charger downstairs away in a totally different room. Now, if you catch her behaving like that, it's, it's, a, it's a hard next pretty much. Um, you should not tolerate any kind of behavior, like any kind of suspicious behavior, um, anything like that, where she's clearly not in your frame. Women that behave like that are always going to be prob a big problem for you later on down the road. What kind of problem does that look like? Dude, it could be any number of things. Like there's, uh, there's a YouTube video that somebody sent me the other day. Uh, let me give you the name of it. It's something like the, uh, hang on a sec here, dudes. I, you know, I do these shows on the fly. It's called, uh, do, 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 it's a quintessential video that you need to see. So it's called The Curious Case of Dahlia Dipolotia. Uh, it's spelled D-I-P-P-O-L-I-T-O, -P -P -O -O, Dahlia, D-A-L-I-A. -A. This crazy chick, this guy uh, got sucked into this crazy chick and um, she hired a hitman who ended up being an undercover cop to try to kill her husband. Um, she completely denies it, um, you know, acts in a very underhanded way during the police investigation. This is the kind of thing that women can do if they're trying to unlock your phone with your fingerprint while you're asleep. These are the kind of women that you want to avoid. Unless you want to get rubbed out by some hitman, uh, you're inviting that potential problem in your life. So as soon as you detect it, it should be a hard next. It should not be something that you tolerate under any circumstances whatsoever. Thanks for the super chat again. Um, okay, let's get back to this list over here. For some reason, she kept growing sideways. Yeah, if she can't, if she can't maintain her beauty and her femininity, that's a that's a hard next for me. I have no tolerance for that. You know, I put a lot of priority on self care. I'm in my mid 40s. I look great. I expect her to maintain the same level of attraction that she had when I met her. You know, setting aside natural aging that you can't do anything about. But if you're with a chick on a long term basis, she better look pretty much as good as she did the day that I met her. If she starts packing on weight uh, and putting on maximum density, it's for me, it's forget it. I'm, 
I'm just not attracted to that. That's just me. Um, looks like we covered most of these over here. So Steve or uh, Sean, let me see what your super chat was. Uh, did I miss you? Sean's story. Where'd you go? Sean, 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 Sean. I don't see your super chat, Sean. Oh, there it is. Worst flag I've ever seen. Okay. Worst flag I've ever seen. If you can't learn to be friends with my ex-boyfriend, you'll never truly understand me because he's part of who I am. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I can't believe the crap that women try to pull on dudes. Okay, Sean, here's the thing with that. If you can't learn to be friends with my ex-boyfriend, you'll never truly understand. You know what? I wouldn't even I wouldn't even engage in that dialogue. It would it would just be like, all right, I'll see you later, or get the hell out. It's like you should have no time in your bandwidth for this. A guy on his purpose, on his mission, uh, that is chasing excellence and not women, that is actively engaging in women or spinning plates. If this shows up, this should not show up at the one year mark. If this shows up at the one year mark and it's been happening for the entire 12 months, for example, and you've had some dialogue or some back and forth on it, um, it, it's just not a good sign, right? Like she doesn't respect you. Women with boyfriends don't keep in touch with their ex-boyfriends, okay? It's it's burn the bridge, you're done, see you later. I have no tolerance. I mean, if she wants to be in a monogamous relationship that's you know exclusive, but she's keeping in touch with ex-boyfriends or she wants an you know, wants me to be friends with her ex-boyfriend. It's like pound sand, lady. Get lost, okay? I don't have time for that. I'm busy doing things, you know? Now, if you're in an open relationship, that might be a different ball of wax. You can do whatever the hell you want with that. But she's not, at the end of the day, seeing you as her best choice, um, as her best option. She's probably alpha widowed by this guy. And uh, she's keeping around as a backup plan. You know, like I said earlier, um, you know, if you go back about 45 minutes, I opened it up early on, um, about half of women admit to having a backup plan that are in a long-term relationship or a marriage. Those are the ones that admit to it. This dude is her backup plan, right? And she's just trying to prevent that from becoming a problem. Apologies for not uh, catching that, Sean, but got you right there. All right. Um, let's hit some of the super chats that showed up on Twitter. So I asked the exact same question there. If you guys aren't following me, it's at rich underscore Cooper. You can uh, hop on my feed. Jack Napier, my brother, says, trying to change my behavior in her benefit and then using her mother as leverage. Any kind of manipulative Machiavellian type of behavior is always going to be a bad sign. Um, it always is going to invite some kind of train wreck um, in your life in the future. Um, a man on his purpose will not allow a woman to modify his behavior. I mean, if your behavior is aligned with chasing excellence and you're on a path, um, Anything that she's doing to try to manipulate that or if she's trying to recruit family members. This is another thing that happens a lot that guys um, are not not able to resist sometimes is when she tries to re recruit her friends or she uses shaming tactics like, well, you know, Jill's Jill's boyfriend is, you know, doing this thing and you don't do that thing. So why don't you do that thing, too? So, you know, you can be like Jill's boyfriend and then you can get the nice compliant starfish sex that Jill's boyfriend gets, too. It's like, no, no. Um, your behavior should not change for anybody. It's you know it's as simple as that. If you change your behavior, it should be for your benefit, not for anybody else's. American Dad. Uh, Scott was on a Before the Train Wreck about, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 episodes ago. He's an ex-military guy, uh, clinical psychologist. He says, uh, sex dropped off a cliff after a really intense three to four months at first. Tried for almost a year and a half to respark what was at the beginning. Finally gave up. Uh, let's just kind of go down through the thread here. What do you uh, attribute the decline to? She had a sexual trauma as a ch child. She was really sweet girl, but sexually pretty messed up. Uh, let that be somebody else's problem. Yeah, she ended up marrying a way lower T, less intense guy. They seem pretty well matched. Um, usually I find that if sex starts to, dr now, I mean, he's a clinical psychologist, so he probably has a lot more skills than I do in, in, in trying to identify childhood trauma. So let's just defer to him on that one. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything beyond that. That's definitely worth looking at. Let me look for some on here that have a lot of hearts as well. Here's one. Uh, Towel. So 36. We'll give him a like here. In this COVID pandemic nightmare, she made my confinement miserable, showing her darker side. 
she has been she has being violent and intolerant with me. Well, I already talked about violence, so I'm not going to cover that again. Uh, and the children yelling at us every day at all hours because she does the cleaning of the house or cook some food. Yeah, I've said, um, I actually made an announcement. I bet I could dig up the old tweet because I know it's going to age really well. But I bet, I was talking to my family lawyer a couple weeks ago about this kind of stuff too. I bet there's going to be a spike in divorce filings this summer uh, because of the uh, quarantine stuff. A lot of people were laid off. They were forced to work from home. Kids are out of school, so they're at home. That is really going to stress the relationship. One thing that you guys would have heard Sean say on a few before the train wrecks, before he took his break, was um, you know you want to invite stress into the relationship at some point because that's really going to test it and see how she deals with that sort of stuff. And this COVID pandemic, this quarantine situation, uh, has been you know imposed on everybody pretty much you know for the most part in the West. So if you've seen um, your life become miserable, now if you're married, there's really not much you can do about it. I mean, yeah, you can file for divorce, but you're probably gonna um, lose quite a bit or you're gonna potentially lose quite a bit if you don't plan it properly. But if you're in a long-term relationship and um, that stress applied to relationship, whether you're living together or dating or you saw each other a lot more because you were dating uh, during the pandemic and things were got, got really bad, like intolerant or she's violent. It's like, get out. Don't, don't eat, like, forget about it. There's, there's, there's nothing to fix. You've seen who she really is. And you're going to see more of that if you continue in the relationship with her. Um, I've been in a non-coab LTR for a bit now. And, uh, during the quarantine, uh, my chick's been around a lot. She's been very useful. She's been very helpful. Uh, you know, she's taken on a lot of the domestic stuff around the house when she's been here, laundry, cooking, cleaning. So a woman in that kind of environment, you know, would, to me anyway, would, you know, basically get promoted to carry on, you know, with the LTR if you want to improve it, if you want to, you know, at some point consider, consider living with her, that's a good test for that. But if during this pandemic she's become intolerant or violent, get the hell out. Forget about it, man. Uh Cool Hand says, I foresee a baby boom, divorces and foreclosures. You'll probably see a small spike in births. Uh, I think you're definitely going to see a spike in divorces and potentially foreclosures. There's going to be some money problems coming out of people. Um, throw away 8080, super chat. What's PHP? 250 PHP. Seems like a lot. I don't know. Um Came from a traditional Chinese society. Some married women made a matchmaking group in Facebook. Singles, guys, and girls put up profiles there. But I keep seeing women with partners commenting. Thoughts? Um, listen, women like to chime in on social media sites, especially during this pandemic. A lot of people are not working. They're laid off work. Um, I basically had to shut down my um, Facebook page for entrepreneurs and cars because Karens are just losing their shit over it because they had nothing else better to do. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't read too deeply into it. Women just like to chime in. And again, guys, don't take advice on women from women. You don't ask a fish how to catch the fish. You ask the fisherman how to catch the fish. That's where you're going to get clear, concise advice. Anytime I've had somebody send me a video or at me on a tweet when, when a woman offers advice to men on women, it's almost always ridiculous. It just doesn't serve guys. So just, you know, take it with a grain of salt, if you will. Filipino peso. Okay, thanks. Um, let's see if there's any other ones here with big likes that I can hit. I think that's about it. Uh, da, 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 da. I think we've covered a few of these. Not supporting understanding my goals. Yeah, that's a big one. I'm surprised that one didn't get any attention. But um, if she's not a compliment to your life, then she's going to try to be the focus of it. That is a big red flag. Most beta men will tolerate it. They will abandon their hope, dreams, and strategy. You know, you know, there's that old saying that women are dream killers. It's not that women are dream killers, but men are all too happy to abandon their dreams and their purpose in life to fulfill and supplicate hers. And they think that it's going to win them more brownie points, uh, maybe more enthusiastic intimacy with her at the end of the day, but it ends up backfiring on them always. Because anytime you get off your purpose, you stop chasing excellence and you start bending the knee and supplicating her, 
slowly but surely, her level of interest is on the decline until it hits the basement. And it's it's basically like the clock is ticking down to the end of that relationship. As soon as you do that, the clock will tick down to that at some point. She may not leave if she doesn't have the options to leave, but the chances of it happen greatly, greatly increase. Um, oh, here's one. Let's 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 hit on the phone one because um, we didn't actually get that one. Ali here said, hiding the phone every time we meet up. If they concealing phone from y'all, it's time to dip. Don't know what a dip is, but I will tell you this, guys. If your LTR, you know, we're talking about LTR at the one-year mark. If your LTR has her phone face down all the time, or she's on it like this, like if you're sitting over here and she's hiding the screen from you, she's up to no good. Um, you're not going to have a good experience with her on a long-term basis. She's, she's definitely, her, her phone is basically a, bo a box of dicks at that point. You know, she's, she's got other, other suitors on there. She doesn't see you as her best choice. Um, you know, some guys will call her out and just, you know, take the phone and look through it. What you're going to find is what you're not going to want to see. Um, you're going to have to set some boundaries on it. And if you can't, uh, enforce them, if you're in an LTR, it's next, just see ya guys, you have to be able to understand that you have to keep yourself in a position of abundance of your purpose and your mission coming first above all else. And she also has to understand that she's replaceable. Everybody's replaceable. I love it when somebody, you know, gets in a company and they're like, oh, you know, you can't replace me. Nobody can do what I do here sort of thing. Or when women think that, oh, nobody can replace me. Nobody's, nobody's got a vajizzle like this. You, you never get anything as good as this. It's like, look, everybody's replaceable. Okay. So don't think for a minute that, you know, you need to stick out bad behavior or tolerate abuse because it's never, 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 ever, ever going to end well for you. Um, uh, Mad Salty Skills uh, responded to this guy and he said, 100% my last relationship was like that, always hiding her phone from my site. Soon found out she obviously was cheating on me. The second they start hiding, hiding their phone, just hit it one last time and ghost, he says. Uh, she kept taking prescription headache pills. So that's an addictive personality. I talk about that in my red flag chapter. This one guy here got 93 uh, upvotes or hearts on it. So let's see what he says here. Red Rum says, realization that she considered women, her, as arriving in a relationship and already ideal default state and men, me, as naturally defective, incomplete and needing change correcting into that same state. And in accordance with this paradigm, no issue would slash could ever be her fault. Um, yeah, you're going to get women that uh, want to change you and don't see anything wrong with them or that behavior. Um, women are notorious for putting men through a process of betatization by a thousand concessions. And that starts with honey, put your toothbrush in this thing over here, or don't brush your teeth outside of the bathroom on the carpet. Uh, honey, put your white socks in the hamper for the white clothes and your dark socks in the dark hamper. So it starts with something simple like that. Then it moves to something, let's go vegan together. And then it goes at some point to something like, let's have an open relationship because I banged this guy from work or on my field trip or whatever the hell it was. Um, women that make small incremental changes to you are basically telling you that you're not good enough, that you're not her first choice, and you will eventually go through a process of betatization by a thousand concessions. It even happens to alpha men. Alpha chads can get into a relationship with women, and women like this can uh, systematically, and they're notoriously going to do this, they'll, they'll, they'll systematically whittle away at the alpha chad that she loved, adored, and pined for and turn him into a beta plow horse. And it doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes it takes months. Sometimes it takes years. But you'll see these guys in the department stores and the malls when they open. You know, they're not quite fully open right now. But you'll see them there. You know, they're pushing the buggy with, you know, uh, three kids in a buggy and one bun in the oven. And she's just, just disgusting, obnoxious, you know, belittling, browbeating thing, treating him like a pile of crap. And she's nothing to look at. Um, and these guys are, they've just had their soul removed from their body. So be really, really careful with women that women that do that stuff to you. Um, 
another super chat here. Let me hit this one. If Elon Musk finally comes out with that neural link device, maybe women and men can finally understand. Dude, men and women will never, ever. Um, see, <laughs> there's an old saying. Um, you can either love a woman or you can understand her, but it's very difficult to do both. I think that if you're if you're fully red pill aware, you know, if you've, you know, if you've taken it and you've adopted that lens to view life and women in the landscape. Now I like to apply it to everything in life, business, financial transactions, politics, even these stupid riots and, you know, looting and, you know, vandalizing and all this stuff. Um, I look at everything with a clear and concise lens. And I think at some point you can still love a woman, but also understand that they are a woman. They can't love you the way that you want to be loved. The thing that most guys get stuck on, I'm not sure if Hunter, you're here or, or, or not, but the thing that most guys get stuck on is they pine for women that will just love them, love them for who they are. Um, and that doesn't happen. Women love you for what you are for what you can provide and if that evaporates or if that stops or if you stop chasing excellence and you become less valuable in her eyes that love gets removed it is not you know it doesn't matter if you take vows you know till death do us part and sickness and health and richer and poorer and blah 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 that that has no meaning okay that's just some shit that somebody wrote at some point like let me just write this shit down i think i'll just sickness and health yeah okay and richer and poorer too yeah let, let's let's write that shit down too that's not how women are Women only love you so long as they see you as your best option, so long as you are going to be their best choice. And if you can understand that, then you can love a woman for what she is. Um, and it really just, you know, kind of boils down to that. Um, there's a couple more that I want to hit. I got like another, uh, let's see here, 15 minutes or so on this broadcast before I got to move on to uh, hop on something for my men's community. Let me just grab my notes here. So I want to hit a couple of more items that may or may not have shown up. Uh, number four on my red flag list is competes with you. So this didn't show up. Uh, I'm just going to read this to you. A woman that constantly tries to compete with you might seem cute at first, but it's a test of your competency as a man. And it's an underhanded behavior that ultimately aims to reduce your worth to her. She doesn't know that she's doing this, by the way. The female primary social order tells women that they are better than men, and it's why we see the rise of the boss girl on social media. So if you guys ever see like Facebook posts or Twitter posts, I bet right now if I if I type in uh, boss girl on Twitter, here, let's, let's, let's do a little social experiment live. Search Twitter, hashtag boss girl. Let's see what comes up here. And I'll share my screen. So... You can go do this yourself. Um, so top uh, tweets from boss girls. Okay, so this is a boss girl over here. Uh, listen, just just look at the state of this. This is all, look at this. Look at all the shoes and the handbags and the outfits and all this crap over here. She's got more red flags than a Chinese communist parade. All these tattoos. Guys, these, these boss girls, they're trying to compete. Okay. Uh, this chick over here is talking about one year ago, I launched my side hustle boss girl, right? Uh, I'm not here yet. Boss girl, click and subscribe and enjoy viewing my daily content for me and my instant replies from this boss girl. What do you think she's like? What exactly is she the boss of? What is she the boss of here? <laughs> Aside from the sexy pose in the mirror, she's practically re revealing most of her body here. So this is the sort of stuff that you're going to see, you know, oh, here's, here's one of your boss girls. You know, she seems like a really sweet girl to have in your life boss girl what else we got here ends up mostly being pictures for some reason you get you know like you get the idea though right guys um let me continue reading the boss girl um underhanded behavior okay uh to, to social media i once dated a woman that competed with her brother growing up and that competitive behavior continued into her relationship with me so um if you see this behavior with, so there's a really, really important reason why I put this in the red flag chapter. This is not one that a lot of guys think of. Again, download it here if you've just hopped on the screen. But if you see her competing with siblings and behaving in an underhanded way, uh, making a lot of disparaging statements like, well, my house is bigger than your house, or I've got, 
you know, I got 11 foot ceilings on the main floor and you only have nine foot ceilings. So you're a loser <laughs> sort of thing. When you start seeing things like that, I didn't know what it was at first. I was just like, oh, well, that's, that's, that's kind of cute, you know, whatever. Um, but as the relationship uh, progressed, she started to try to apply the same behavior that she was using on her brother with me. And what ended up happening? Well, here, let me keep reading it for you. Uh, it's a red flag because when women compete with you, she thinks that she's better than you. And a woman that thinks that she's better than you will not respect you and will ultimately try to undermine you. For a woman's hypergamy to be satisfied, she needs to see you as her best option. Okay. If she sees you as her best option, she is not going to compete with you. Only a woman that tries to compete with you uh, in income, I don't know, car, house, whatever. If she's trying to compete with you, she doesn't see you as her best option. And there's a common theme here uh, where you'll see boss girl, hashtag boss girl, with women that will behave like this. So you want to look out for that. Uh, for a woman to satisfy her hypergamy, I already covered that. So she needs to see you at least one to two points higher than her in sexual market value for her to be satisfied. Women don't compete with you if she sees you as the best option. Uh, do, do, do. I've already covered most of this. I kind of covered that. Okay, so there's competes. I've already talked about validation online. Uh, I talked about liars. Let's do hissy fits. We didn't. We didn't. Nobody actually mentioned women throwing hissy fits. Um, hissy fits are a big one. That's number seventeen. Hissy fits. Where are you? Okay. A few paragraphs here. Let me cover this. So uh, someone will never learn the social maturity required to process their emotions. So they re resort to hissy fits to deal with differences in a relationship. So when my daughter was three, if something didn't go her way, she'd throw herself on the ground, face down, kicking and screaming, punching limbs, you know, you know, it's, it's a typical toddler type of reaction. If you take away a toy or you turn off something that she's, you know, heavily involved in and you want to change the activity or the behavior. Some kids can throw very bad hissy fits. Some are just like, okay, they just kick and scream and they have a spaz. Now that's okay with, uh, for children because they don't know how to process that emotion. They don't have the social maturity at that age. So it's excusable. Um, they don't know how to process. Okay. So the kick and scream as an adult women, hissy fits are unacceptable and they're a red flag and they come in many forms. So rather than approaching the issue head on like an adult, she commonly starts by passively aggressive. So passively aggressive going on social media and doing something provocative or sexy, behaving erratically or making underhanded posts. So um, you may have had a woman throw a hissy fit in the sense where you have some acrimony, there's a bit of discussion, you know, she's got a dispute and then she'll go on social media without you know, overtly stating it's because of you or mentioning you in the post, but everything around the post is built around why you're an asshole without, you know, naming you. That's a hissy fit. That's, that's one version of a hissy fit. Another version of a hissy fit is she doesn't like something or something doesn't go her way. She'll go on social media and she'll post a provocative or sexy picture that she wouldn't normally do. <clears throat> that's another example of a hissy fit. Um, Another interesting hissy fit that I've come across before, um, more than once in fact, is just leave my shit on the front porch, okay, when things aren't going their way. They don't know how to have a conversation, so they'll just throw this hissy fit and leave my shit on the front porch. I remember I had this girlfriend once in my 20s, and um, I don't know how I ended up with, um, what the hell was it? It was like the very first version of Resident Evil uh, on the very first Nintendo, and she wanted to have me drop that off. I think uh, the motorcycle helmet and there was one other thing or something like that. But she basically wanted me to leave it on the front porch so she could come and collect it. Didn't tell me why, but this was the hissy fit that she threw because she didn't know how to communicate uh, overtly and have a conversation as an adult and say, you know, these are some things that bother me. I'd like to have a conversation with you about it. Instead, it was just leave my shit on the front porch. So that's another version of a hissy fit. Uh, these outbursts by women are bad news. There's a correlation between her hissy fits often and daddy issues. Fathers set logical and reasonable boundaries for their daughters to preserve her value as a woman. Now, if she goes and breaks them in a rebellious and dangerous way in protest, that's a bad sign. Uh, you should deal with them head on, treat them as unacceptable behavior. You might want to use a soft next. It might have to be a hard next. If you don't know what those are, you can Google them. I don't want to spend 10 minutes ex explaining them. But do not argue with women. 
you're not going to let, you know, like I said earlier, like logic and reason don't, don't get, don't let those things get in the way of the hissy fit. It's a soft net. Okay. Let me explain the soft next. Generally speaking, the response to bad behavior like this is a soft next. Um, and all that is, is cutting off contact for a short period of time, three, four, five days max sort of thing. Um, and when you come back, you're going to re-enter the conversation and you're going to tell her, let's have a conversation about that hissy fit you threw the other day. She's not going to want to acknowledge it. She's not going to want to have to talk about it. She's certainly not going to want it to be recognized as a hissy fit, but you have to call it out for what it is and be curious about it. You know, it's, I'm curious, you know, why did you behave that way sort of thing? And, and you'll find that that'll usually open up the dialogue. You know, uh, men are always deductive, rational thinkers. Women aren't, you know, like, again, um, attention is the uh, coin of the realm when it comes to women. So when you remove it, it gives you an opportunity to have that conversation about the hissy fit. If she can't um, accept what she's done and acknowledge that it's a hissy fit, then that is a big red flag and it's time to go. If she's doing the work on it and it doesn't re-enter the relationship, not too much of a big deal. You want to look for that improvement. Hissy fit's covered. I covered... Um, Addictions are pretty straightforward. Any woman with an addictive personality, addicted to uh, SSRIs, uh, alcohol, cigarettes, drugs, um, any one of those things, shopping, returning shit from shopping, you know, on a consistent basis, buying shoes, buying handbags, you know, crap like that. Um, any woman with an addictive personality is going to make that problem your problem. You know, you're going to have to deal with it at some point if you're in an LTR. So I would, I would recommend guys completely stay away from women with addictive personalities or strong addictions. And then the last one that I wanted to hit is drama. Um, there's another super chat here. I'll hit that in a second. The last one that I wanted to hit was uh, drama number 19. Drama, drama is a short one. Drama queens. All not some. All women crave some form of drama periodically. There's no women that are completely free of, of drama. So just know this. You will periodic, sorry, they will periodically manufacture indignation in the absence of any issues in your relationship. That's why you've heard guys... Um, I think it was Ryan that said it a few times. He's like, you know, like every once in a while in a rule zero, he'd be like, you know, sometimes you just got to call her a cunt to kind of like, you know, manufacture the indignation for her sort of thing. Um, and then you kind of deal with that and you just kind of like, you know, cool it off. But women will manufacture indignation if it is at, you guys could have a great relationship, top shelf, everything's great. And then, you know, one day she'll just be like, um, you know, she'll just, I don't know what to use an example, but she'll, but she'll throw a little bit of a drama queen episode and manufacture something out of nothing. I like to call them mountains out of molehills. Um, if she's going to turn molehills into mountains, then it's a drama, you know, it's a drama experiment. You know, we're going to go, you know, hop on the drama train sort of thing. It's also another form of a hissy fit. It's a lighter form of it. Uh, you're going to inevitably encounter trauma with women at some point, but if it appears more than once within the first three months of dating, or more than the weekly thing during your LTR, she's flat out telling you this drama will be a regular occurrence for life. A lot of guys will tolerate mega drama in their lives. I've talked to so many guys where it's like they get, see, it's exhausting. It's like an energy drain. It's, you know, it's an energy vampire drama queens. They just suck the living joy out of you. Stay away from drama queens. If it happens you know, periodically, like we're talking once every three to six months, it's going to happen. Like I said, women will actively manufacture it if there's a total absence of it. Uh, but if but if it's mountains out of molehills and drama queen stuff, buckle up, buddy, because you're going to be in for a roller coaster ride if you don't put your foot down. Uh, a soft next is a good way to maintain that boundary. Manufactured indignation is really just a shit test. It's all about testing your frame as the dominant frame in the relationship. So remember, drama will happen with all women at some point. So decide early on what you will and what you won't tolerate. Alpha men with plenty of options will tolerate very little to no drama. Lesser men with few options will accept it as it comes. Okay, let's start to wrap up here. Wow, 90 minutes. That went by fast. Um Let's see, there's two more super chats and we'll wrap up. Aaron here said, what do you think about women with mommy issues? You're going to have to define what a mommy issue is. Um, give me some clarity on that. But any bad behavior, I don't know. Like, let's say the mommy issue is mom's a drama queen, daughter becomes a drama queen. I don't know. Is that a mommy issue? It, it really falls into red flag number 19. It's really just the whole drama queen thing. So see if you can give me some clarity there. 
Sean says, uh, do you ever try to explain to her why all the orbiters in her phone are an issue without being labeled controlling behavior that is? That's a good question. So the way that I would handle that is, um, well, maybe just talk about sexual strategies. I don't, I've never had a problem with a woman accepting that the female sexual strategy is hypergamy. You're not going to explain it as hypergamy. You're not going to use red pill lingo or anything like that. But what you can tell her is like, look, if you're actively marketing yourself, uh, what do you say? Uh, try to explain or reason. Or so if you're at, so you're talking to her, you know, specifically, if you're actively on social media, posting provocative pictures for these orbiters to comment, like, and DM you, you're basically telling me that you're up for sale and available. You're saying, hey guys, I'm over here, I'm up for sale. And that's fine, just, just approach it from the perspective of, that's cool if that's what you wanna do, okay? Now, if she's had a conversation with you about, well, you know, I want you to be my boyfriend and I wanna be monogamous with you and blah, 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 then you, then you can go back on that and say, hey, look, you know, I understood that this is what you want, so I'm confused. Why are you soliciting the attention of random dudes on social media? for likes, comments, and DMs. Are you selling anything? Do you have an energy drink that you have to post by? Are you hope deal with a, you know, a large contract to promote bang energy drink? You're not, you're just, you're just a random thought with an Instagram account with 3000 thirsty betas following you that are looking for your attention. So if that's what you want to do, that's cool, but that's not what my understanding is of it. So if you're going to exercise your sexual strategy of marketing yourself, then I'm going to go and do the same. And then just leave it at that. And then just your actions will speak for themselves. And she'll either enter your frame and abandon it, or she's going to protest and double down on it. And you'll know exactly what her intention is. She obviously doesn't see you as her best option. And she sees these guys or one of these guys out there potentially being a better option than you. And that'll be the end of the relationship. It really just boils down to that. I mean, you don't make it a big deal. You're not like, you know, banging your fist or yelling at her and you can't do that. You can't do this, that, and the other thing. Just say, all right, look, if you want to, you know, if you want to market and sell yourself on social media, fine, cool, go do it. I'm going to go exercise my sexual strategy, which happens to be unlimited access to unlimited women. So sign her. See you later. That's the way I would handle it. All right. Um, I think with that, I'm going to wrap up this broadcast. I want to thank you guys for tuning in today and uh, contributing to Super Chats, people that join the channel. Again, algorithms love a good like and uh, leave a comment if you guys are watching the replay. These are all before the train wrecks are available on your favorite podcast platforms, uh, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, blah, blah, blah. So go out there and find them if you wanna listen while you're driving. Really, really appreciate you guys checking this out. I need to shout out to my channel sponsor before I go. Boom, here we go. It is right here. Tactical soap, uh, Grondike soap, tactical soap, uh, and uh, beard oil. It is a pheromone infused handmade soap in the United States. It'll give you a little bit of advantage on a sexual marketplace. I mean, you're showering anyway, so if you're enjoying the content, buy something that supports the creation of the content on my channel. Uh, if you're watching the replay, I'll in the top comment pin um, all the links that you might want to check out. Tactical soap is there. The 10% coupon code's already applied. If not, you can go to coopersoap.com and check out over there. You can use coupon code Cooper if it's available to you. I want to thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.